So let's leave that system here and go to my other box and log into my safeguard apply. Now we go to settings and you're gonna see that you do not have any session module section in your settings page anymore. It's what you will see on the SPS side is if you look on the SSH control or on the RDP control, doesn't matter, see it here, go to the connections that have been defined. There's something that's called safeguard RDP or on the SSH, it is safeguard default. These definitions of the session proxy functionality in the SPS have been automatically generated during the join. In this case, it simply says, whatever comes and wherever it wants to go, please send it through the proxy here. There are a couple of things you may have want to look into about the internal configuration, how this is really, uh, really done. The important things you may want to see is about plugins, because there are a couple of plugins uh, and uh, associated with the creation of that connectivity profile here. But I don't want to go too, too deep into this, just to show you how this really works. So once you have done the join, you see, you're going to see this type of connections for RDP and SSH. Of course, you can still use the proxy in this full functionality for other protocols, but you have to configure the appropriate connectivities, uh, connections and connection profiles on your own. But this is a different story and there will be lots of videos on this maybe available as well. But to be honest, if you just do the join via the safeguard integration and you don't want to, to, to play around with the SPS module as you do not have done before, this is all you need to do. Just simply do the join and go back to safeguard. That's it. You don't have to tackle here the SPS any longer. So in this case, we can simply log out here. If you just go here to your entitlements and you may create an entitlement. In my example, this is SPS joined and you go to the access request policies you can define the stuff in the usual way as before. So if you want to request or define an access request policy, so you usually give it a name, select the protocol, select the scope. That's pretty much the same as usual. Request to approver as you want. Reviewer, of course, the same. Access configuration, pretty much the same. Whatever you want with it. And the magic now lies here in session settings. And in session settings, you will have find now something that is called SPS connection policy. And this is exactly the same that was shown here in your SSH control connections. So it automatically has picked up that definition here and put it here in the selection box. So of course, if you have duplicated this definition or have selected a different range for systems or have done any modification to this and have lots of multiples of these policies here available, they simply will be available in this drop down menu as well. So once you have done this, uh, you go to the time restrictions, the emergency and so on and so on. Okay, pretty much straightforward. You don't have to define any much more. Now you can request the session in the usual way. So go to your request. Select the asset, select the account. Do I have the right one? Yes, I have. And submit the request. And launch your client. And as usual, it is logging you in with these nice little tokenized access string. And you may see that it now contains something that's called vault address. This wasn't there before the join because this was simply token equals blah, 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 and so on, and a couple of other information. So it has changed a little bit, but you will, as I said, will only see this with safeguard 2.4, 2.5, and the 5.9 SPS software. Once you have a working session here, whatever here you want, uh, 
the usual one stuff here, you can look this up in your active connections. And you see you now have an active connection via this safeguard SPS. You're not using the internal module any longer because it simply has been switched on. So you, you just see it here. You can, of course, use the functionality of the SPS now to whatever terminate it, to do some kind of following, shadowing. You can do the user behavior controls, the so-called safeguard privileged analytics engine uh, configured to look into that session and so on and so on. But we, we're going to cover this a little bit later in a different video. Just to show you that you still have this one here. And of course, you can do all this nice stuff as well. Maybe one just ad addition. If you go to the definition here, take a little time. And if you have the access config, um, bloop, 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 you don't find here the option to record a session. There was some kind of session recording on off in the old version before the join. That is not longer available. It, so it has to be configured on the SPS side in the usual way. So go to the SSH control, go to connections, expand it, and simply click on enable indexing. So the recording will be done on the SPS. So in this case, okay. And of course we have a working session here. This is very fine. And we can now terminate it if we want. And if we go to our session or to our standard management interface and we go to the system activity and we want to have, oops, maybe session related activity as usual. Okay, and we want to have it here. You're going to see a recording and the recording is on the session we have just initiated. So in this case, you have the, capable, the possibility to stick to the standard user interface on Safeguard to do all the session recording as usual, as you have done before. And now you can see the, the session I just have used here. Of course, you can jump to the activity as usual. Okay, more. Here we go. This one. You have to see my typos and the stuff I have put into this. So this was really the session. And of course, if you go to the searching page of Safeguard, you're going to see, see the session here as well. This is the session I have just taken. And you can go to details. You see all my typos here as well, because the session proxy and all the analytics has just detected all my inputs. You can start to render the video on this appliance as well, because this appliance now simply pulls the data from the SPS appliance and displays it here in that user interface. So from the audit perspective, it's pretty much the same. So you can view it here or view it there. It's always the same data. And it usually uh, depends on the thing, what you're preferring in terms of interface. Of course, there's still lots of work to be done and there's heavy work going on behind the scenes to make all these interfaces be joined into one common management interface in the near future. So stay tuned.